Hello, and you have called the Chris Monroe Real Estate Hotline. How can I help? Hi, Chris. Well, hello there. Is, wait a minute. <laughs> is it real or is it the recording? Hello? Uh, so you say this is too much, huh? This is Chris. How are you? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I was about to say, never mind. Forget it. I know everybody needs a good laugh every day, so I had to get you yours in. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, okay, is this real or is this a really a recording <laughs> or somebody fake? Okay, I I want to thank you for, number one, sending me the link to um, Ron, Ron Legrand. Is it oh, Ron? yeah, it's a great, great program there. I'm still learning it. There's still a lot in there. It is, and I actually um, just got in contact with my second lead today, there and you go. Um, the man has like seven properties he wants to own or finance. He's a chiropractor. He doesn't want to sell anything cash, right? He wants to do right. everything with the financing, but the only I, I'm only interested in two of them. So I'm supposed to go take a look at them on Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday. One of them is in St. Anne. And um, all of them are free and clear, right? However, because of the owner financing thing, I'm a little concerned because he has not updated any of the kitchens or bathrooms. And um, he has tenants living in them and everything, right? So I, mm-hmm. I want to give him an offer, which he kind of already said he'll do like a 7% with 10%. Temp- 10000 down on the property that I'm really interested in. But, you know, I haven't even looked at it. I've just seen pictures from Zillow. But anyway, right. so he wants to do 10% down, 7% with a 30-year fixed mortgage or whatnot. Okay. Well, you know, we so, usually buy with nothing down, even though that doesn't stop the deal or anything, you know. But I That's what I'm like. I mean – with 10000 down, like with nothing done to the property and with 7%, how am I supposed to fix it and flip it with the, with something like that? That's and can I you have room on it. Huh? You said, can you do what now? Can I even owner find? I mean, can I even fix and flip an owner finance? I was thinking about just telling him, do, let's do 7% interest only. Well, those numbers don't mean anything without knowing what what is the payment every month, what does that include, you know, everything, you know, property, principal, interest, taxes, insurance, and uh, yeah. you know that down payment. I mean, it, I don't I don't know if that's a deal breaker or not. It depends on you know the numbers of the house. I can't say, you know, but generally, I you know, unless the house is worth two hundred thousand or something, would I want to put that kind of money down on a house? I mean, not to say you could or couldn't. It's just, you know, when they start talking large down payments, where are you going to make your money at? Exactly. That's what, yeah. That's but I don't what do I anything thinking. to deal with fixing and flipping, so that's not my expertise. My expertise is extracting funds out of the house, meaning I get the house for little or nothing down, and I put a tenant buyer in there, and they put a down payment. I'll make my money on that end as well as a cash flow as possible and the, and the cash out on the back end if they actually buy it. That's what I do. I don't do any of that fix flip stuff because that won't work with most of those deals like that. You got to get them at a discount, meaning you know thirty, forty, fifty percent discount to even consider doing any type of fix and flip on anything, regardless if they're going to do owner financing or something. Unless you're the one that's going to do the work and you can do it for you know little or no labor or something, or you got some kind of competitive advantage that I'm not aware of. But generally, those type of deals, I wouldn't do that. I mean, you know, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't fix a house up like that, not me, because you're taking all the risk. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. So just, he said the kitchens are a mess and all of this stuff here, because one of the the guys that live in there is a doctor, and he's uh, from out of country, he's a doctor, and he keeps the place a mess. The kitchen and Yeah, I mean, I I mean, if it's, is it vacant or is it, these are occupied units? He one side, okay, so it's like it's a it's a single family, but one side was created into like a little apartment, 
and because it's a little side area. Looked like it could have been like a closed in porch area, but it's all it's all brick. But from looking at it, it looks like one side is like a little bitty apartment, and the other side is like a, the main living area. So it's and vacant, so, or somebody living in it? One, yeah, no. The doctor lives on the primary side, and he's only paying four seventy five a month. And the one yeah. lady lives; she just moved out last week. That lived in the smaller side. And yeah, typically, I would prefer to have them vacant, you know, unless that tenant would sign a new lease. Because you know, my big thing on any house that I I take, uh, you know, mm-hmm. the tenant must be responsible for the maintenance and repairs of the house. Don't call me when the sink start dripping or whatever's going on. Do not call me. You know, treat me like the bank. Just pay me the money, and uh, you know, I'm not looking to get calls at two in the morning. Now, if you want to do that. That's something you can choose to do, but I wouldn't take any deals like that, you know, because I don't want to be a landlord no, like that. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't think I want to do be a landlord either. I was trying to find a different exit strategy for it, um, you know, to find out when when I do make him an offer, what would I do with the property? I prefer to do a lease option. That's what I prefer. And the only way that'll work is if it's either vacant or that tenant that's in there is willing to sign off on new documents to, you know, uh, go under your new program. It's the only way that's going to okay. work. And okay. that's why I usually just rather take the vacant one, you know, because that's um, a little bit easier to deal with. You can show it more often. You can uh, you can work with it. Even if the house needs work, that's not a problem because you can always put a person in on a work for equity program. So it's not necessarily a deal breaker that it needs work. It's just a deal breaker if you got, you know, tenant issues or the numbers don't make sense. I mean, first thing, the numbers. I don't care how beautiful the house is or any of that stuff. What are the numbers? And if he's talking a large down payment on something that's not worth it, I don't see a deal there. You know, and I don't know if it's a deal or not just from what you told me. But, I mean, you know, like I said, with with a $10,000 down payment, the house better be worth some, you know, some good money. It can't be worth well, thirty thousand, and I'm gonna put ten thousand down. That's too much. Well, so this is what it. Okay, so when I looked it up, because he he act like he didn't know what it was worth. So I kind of like looked it up on Zillow, and I know that's not, you know, a very firm place to go to get values. So what did the 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 Zestimate say? Yeah, that's what the Zest the Zestimate says is worth one eighteen. He wants to offer me one twenty five, but he said if I see that it needs a lot of repairs, it can be minus the twenty twenty thousand or whatever. He'll take that, you know. So one eighteen <laughs> minus one eight, I mean one twenty minus the twenty thousand. So I guess he'll take one hundred thousand. Like, why is he, I don't know, Is that's not good for me, is it? No, I don't think so. So let me ask you this. Have you been using the scripts that are in that program that I sent you? Yeah, I I used it on him. And so did he, when he, when you asked him those questions, what did he say? I mean, did he get you off script or something? Cause, um, well, you know, no, this, oh, I, this is the answering service script for calls from sellers, but I think I used the wrong script, but this is what happened, okay? So I went down the script, got the address, and I asked them, you know, how much was the house, how much was he selling the house for? He said 135 but he said, I'm willing to negotiate because it needs work. So anyway, he said he's only doing willing to do 7, 7% owner financing, 30-year fix. He doesn't care about cash or anything like that. He wanted to do owner financing. So then so I how did he come to this down payment part? Because that's, that's the problem I'm running into with the down payment. That interest rate and all that stuff isn't an issue right now. The big thing to me is why am I dropping 10000 plus closing costs and, you know, going through all that for a house that needs all this work? Yeah, that's what he pretty much put out there. I didn't ask him any of that. He just put it out there. He said he's willing to do owner financing with 10000 down in 7%. And I told him, I said, well, we'll talk about all of that when I see the property and I send you over an offer, you know, yeah. after I determine what I think it's worth. And then after I figure out, you know, what I'm going to do. And what's the, the monthly payment on it that he's going to do? 
he didn't we didn't go over that yet because like I said yeah. it's not I'm not you know it's not firm and set in stone but I'm just trying to figure out like when I do go see him on Wednesday <sighs> I have so, to make sure I'm I know my all my A's have all my I's need, dotted and T crossed when I talk to yeah, him. Yeah, so you need three you need three questions answered from him before you even go see him or you're wasting your time. Down payment, we need to get that down if possible or even if he said that's the least he'll take is 10,000. Okay, at least we know that. What's the monthly payment? We need to know the monthly. And then I know he said the term is 30 year. I mean, that's not a problem, but I need to know 30 years for how, how much for 30 years because you don't know if you got a spread on it. You don't know what your exit strategy can be. If he wants 800 a month, there's probably no spread in it. If he'll take 400 a month, you might can make a $400 a month cash flow while you wait or something. But, you know, all of that stuff must be determined before you even go waste your time driving out to some house, just being realistic with you. You can do it the other way if you like, but I wouldn't suggest doing it that way. I need to know those those three numbers, down payment, term, and the uh, – and the payment amount, what is the monthly amount? Without knowing those numbers, there's nothing to go see because you don't even know if the numbers make sense. Okay. Now, the, now the numbers may make sense, but I don't know that, you know, because we don't have that information. Okay. All right. Regardless of the repairs and all that other stuff, I mean, you know, we'll get to that point, but without those three main things, how much down, how much a month, and what's the term, uh, you know, that's right on that sheet you got there, that lead property information sheet on the bottom right, that little box. Oh, uh, yeah, and that's what in. I was looking for. I was looking yeah, for you know, that, too. Like, yeah, so okay. it's not filled in on that sheet. You, there's nothing to go see until we get those answers. Yeah. I made me a binder, and I got all my stuff, like, in. I think I pulled yep. out the wrong one. Talk to him, though. So, so there you okay, go. So what I would like, do is get, I would give him a call back and try to get those answers to those questions, if possible, and, uh, you know, because that's part of the million-dollar script. What's the least you could accept on the price if we can agree on terms? He says a number. Is that the best you can do? He says another number. All right, we usually buy with nothing down, okay? Oh, no, we can't do nothing down. All right, so what's the least you'll accept down? Well, I need, I really want a 10000 You can even ask me again, is that the lowest you'll take as a down payment? I need that number down. I'm not putting, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that you should or shouldn't, but just hearing it, I'm not motivated to go drop. Ten thousand dollars on a house and uh, closing costs, and it's not. And I don't even know if it's going to cash flow or what. Regardless of what it looks like, that doesn't even matter yet. The numbers have to make sense before going to see it. And then if once he tells you, you know, what he can do as far as a down payment, what's the lowest monthly you can take, he'll say some number, and then he already told you he'll do thirty years, so that's fine. I don't care about that interest rate or none of that other stuff. I just need to know what is the number, what is the monthly amount I need to pay you every month, how much down, and what's the term. When you get those three pieces of information, then you make the appointment and uh, go through, you know, go through the rest of it like that. And that'll save you a lot of energy and, and stress. And then you won't wonder, well, well I wonder, because if he don't agree to those numbers, what do we, what do we want to see it for? It's nothing to see. Right, it's a waste of time. All right. So well, I'm gonna I mean, do my. You're job. halfway there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because he said he he's and then he got one and um, what do you call it? I think Woodson Terrace. It's a it's another duplex. And anyway, I, so it, it, that's all, that's the same thing with any of them. You know what I mean? You don't have to do it in those exact same words every time, but it's the same get up. We need that information before we can even think about making an appointment. I don't even want to see your house. I don't. You know, I know it needs work, or thanks. I, thanks for telling me what it needs. And really, as far as work, I just need to know about how much work it needs. Would you say ten thousand, twenty thousand, and would it take more than that? Does it need a full gut? I mean, what does it need? Is it livable? You know, if it's not even livable, you're probably not going to want to take it anyway because you want to put somebody in there that can handle it and deal with the repairs right. or the updates or whatever and let them pay that monthly thing, and you don't worry about that unless you want to get into fix or flip. But I, like I said, I don't do that. I don't not do probably not on this one. No, not on this one. My, um, my, my team already agreed not to do any flips in um, St. Anne right now, so. That's um, all risk that's and costly entanglement. <laughs> you don't want to be in that business unless you're ready for it. Yeah. Well, no, I'm I'm already doing fix and flips, but I'm I'm trying to build up my buy and holds right now. And that's what yeah, I'm doing. That's smart. Yeah. yeah so you can extract so, some money right out of this and not have all that money tied up in it. Would make sense. Right. Now, do you do do you normally <laughs> buy it in your L? Do you put it in your LLC? 
No, I put all my properties on a, in a trust, land trust. I don't hold any property. And in land trust, okay. Okay, and yeah, that's LLC what is the beneficiary of the land trust. So okay, yeah, that's what like I'm that. saying. Yeah, I, I, I looked at that video yesterday, and I printed out the um the land trust agreement. Yeah, so, all that stuff in a trust. It's layers, so you know, because it's not on public record. And if you were to get sued at an in, as an individual, it will not attach to your property. Somebody sue you as an individual, you got in your name, they're gonna, it can attach. It will not attach mm-hmm. when it's in a trust because you don't own it. The trust owns the house. Right. That's just one layer, what though, type- you know. So you want to have multiple layers. Right. What title company do you normally use, Chris? Is that land equity? No, I've never used them. I've used six different ones. It depends on what type of transaction it is. I've used, I've did uh, what eight wholesale deals and two subject twos, and uh, I've used what now, six different companies. This, <laughs> now, what do you normally do use for owner financing for for something like this? What title company do you normally use? I want somebody that's good at doing this. Uh, I can see all... someone. Okay. Yeah, I can see who I use. Yeah, I'd have to get that information. Yeah, because I don't, I don't want to just deal with any, anybody. I've never done owner financing before, but I don't want to yeah, just deal with you need people to know what they're doing. That's the, <laughs> and then you got to put a non-owner occupy policy on there. That'll be a little cheaper than whatever they probably got on it. It just depends. He may, it may be about the same with him, but you need those real numbers. You know, what is the, the monthly cost with his percentage, whatever he came up with, what's the number? You know, I don't, you know, that percentage talk don't mean anything to me. You know what I mean? Seven percent for this right. don't mean nothing. What's the what's my monthly payment? Is it five hundred? Right. Is it three hundred? Is it two seventy five? I need a number. So if you agree to some number, they got your interest rate in there or whatever you feel is comfortable for you, that's perfectly fine. But I need to know what's my monthly payment because that's where your you'll know what your exit strategies are. You don't have any exit strategies if you don't know those numbers. Okay. You must get them. All right. I'll, I must. I'll get those. I'll get those three firm answers from him before I actually go out to the appointment. And then, if you don't mind, like after that, can I mean, can you shoot me over the um, information to the title company? That's yeah, just so I can have it on board in my Rolodex. So in the future, yeah. because I know this is what I'm looking to do. So, yeah, because I've been using a real one. estate attorney too. So that's, I use a lot of attorney oh, for a lot of this. So I don't even go through a title company. Sometimes it just depends on what the situation is. It just it's just oh, a little really? bit smoother. Yeah. Yeah. So there it okay. is. We got you covered there. Did I help you out for today? You did, Chris. You're so awesome. Wow. <laughs> Are you going to the um conference in Las Vegas in April? You know, I'm not sure yet. I haven't made any other travel plans for this year. Oh, uh, I'm thinking about I'm going, going somewhere. April. Yeah, he got one he 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 has one um in April. And I'm thinking about. Yeah, I just about, got back from Atlanta, so I'm going to somewhere. I would say by uh, in the next month or two, I'll be going somewhere. I just haven't took time to schedule anything firm, you know. Time is right. valuable, so, so you know, I'm trying to build an empire here. I see, and you're doing a well. You're doing well. You're doing well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm All I'm right. on the same. I'm trying to build my portfolio. That's what I'm doing, but cause, you know. I, the real estate market is kind of getting a little slow. so That's where the wealth is built. All right, I'll let yeah. you get back to your day, and uh, I'll uh, talk to you another time. Thank you, Chris. Have a good one. Uh, don't All forget right. to shoot me the email on the title company or the attorney I, or whatever. I have a memory like an elephant. I never forget anything. Great. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. Thanks, Chris. Bye-bye. Right, you're welcome.